Well, joining me now to look at the week's big stories are Bob Fife, the Ottawa Bureau Chief for the Globe and Mail, and Christy Kirkup, who is a political reporter for the Canadian Press. Both of you, thanks for coming in. Thank you. Of course, we, we have to start with the leaks or the leaks that we are hearing connected to the murdered and missing Indigenous women and girls inquiry. We know Monday is the big day, 1,200 page report at least going to be released. We know it's going to be dramatic because of the testimony we've heard, but we also now know that it's going to be hard hitting. And the leak is that it's going to be using the term genocide. Uh, I want to start with you, Christy, because you've followed this, uh, and this is a story that you've been very close to. Uh, what do you make of what we're hearing, and what are you watching for? Well, I think there's going to be a lot in that 12,000-page uh, document, so yeah. good luck trying to uh, to rip through all the recommendations right away. Of course, again, this is based on a, a CBC News report, and that hasn't been independently confirmed, uh, but, uh, you know, uh, this was language that was also used. Uh, I will remind people, the Truth and Reconciliation Commission called yeah. the residential school legacy a cultural genocide, and, of course, there will be a heavy reference in the forthcoming report on missing and murdered Indigenous women. We're going to hear a lot about the history of colonialism, mm -hmm. about the impact of residential schools, the long-standing issue of sexual abuse, um, ongoing issues like uh, concerns about policing. And you'll mm -hmm. recall that there was the recent uh, video that perhaps brought some of these issues to light because there was a lot of discussion around an RCMP video that was released of a, a Mountie in BC mm -hmm. interrogating a young Indigenous um, woman uh, who in the foster care system was alleging that she was being sexually abused. So I think policing in particular mm -hmm. uh, is going to be an area to watch for because for uh, the pre-inquiry gatherings in particular, that's what the government really heard, that from the beginning of you know when people were going to police, uh, how searches are being conducted, to the extent to which uh, police are actually you know trying to, to get to the bottom of cases, this is really, I think, going to be um, you know where a, a lot of those recommendations are going to be. As I say, we saw that in the pre-inquiry sessions. Yeah. Uh, this was a theme in the TRC's report, and I think that's also going to be be a major headline to come out of uh, Monday's report. Mm -hmm. I want to go to Bob and maybe come back for some more detail because there's other things that are being suggested that are going to be contained, including Indigenous languages and criminal legislation. Bob, what do you make of it? I mean, what are, what are you watching for well, as this look, comes out? Well, there shouldn't be any secret um, that there has been colonial inaction, colonialism towards uh, Indigenous people right from the get-go. Yeah. And I came from a small town in northern Ontario and I can tell you that the police treatment of Indi Indians, uh, they were called then Indians, mm -hmm. were far different than they were of white people, far different even of uh, uh, lower working class white people than it would be for Indians. Uh, they didn't care about them. If there was any kind of abuse, they didn't investigate them. And we are seeing even, you know, 40 some years later, we, we are, there is plenty of evidence that missing and murdered Aboriginal women are thrown to the bottom of the pile and that the police do not take seriously the investigations. The Globe has a bureau that we've set up in Thunder Bay for a year and that is the kind of thing we are still seeing today that the Thunder Bay Police Force has a different attitude towards if you were a white woman and you were raped or your daughter was murdered they would throw all the resources at it, and if it's an indigenous woman who is raped or murdered, they just don't, I'm not saying they don't care, they just don't put it on the highest priorities. Mm -hmm. um, one of the other things that's being suggested, I don't know if it's part of the leak, but is that there's going to be recommendations in terms of different charges uh, to make more serious the charges for uh, intimate partner abuse or killings, uh, to even make it on, I think, akin to first, uh, first degree murder. That's one of the things, mm -hmm. as well as indigenous uh, languages and things like that. Um, you've been following the pre-report and think some, uh, some of the other things that might be in it. Yeah, I think it's uh, a few things worth noting. First of all, uh, the inquiry wanted more time. Uh, yeah. The government uh, decided that they weren't going to grant as much time as the inquiry wanted. And the commission's work has not been without its problems. It's had a ton of staff turnover. Yeah. Uh, it had a really um, abrupt resignation of one of the five commissioners. There's now four commissioners, and it was the Métis commissioner that stepped away, and there was never a replacement of a, a Métis commissioner. And now with this report coming forward, I think the biggest question for a lot of the families, because 
when all this trouble was going on, there was a huge call for this whole thing to be put on pause or to be started over. There were r real concerns about the structure, about the process. And I think the question will be for those families, especially because there's um, only a certain runway between you know now and the election campaign, yeah. how much action can really happen uh, at this point in time? And are they pleased with the findings that the Commission uh, is able to come up with. Okay, I'm going to move ahead because obviously Monday we are going to have extensive coverage mm -hmm. of the release of that report. Uh, let's look at another big issue this week, and that was a visit of uh, U.S. Vice President Mike Pence. He dealt with both two issues, two burning issues. One, NAFTA. He predicts that NAFTA will pass uh, this summer. He's hoping, the mm -hmm. Trump administration is hoping that will pass this summer. But the big debate here in Canada is whether we should ratify it quickly or not. Um, Bob, any Well, the government's not going to ratify the NAFTA deal until the American Congress does. The yeah. Prime Minister has indicated earlier this week that our time frame will be with the time frame of the, of the Americans. And I, I'm, I'm assuming unbeknownst to uh, Vice President Pence, who was talking about how important NAFTA, the new NAFTA deal is and that they want it passed so quickly, and the next day the President Trump is out there saying, I'm going to slap on 5% tariffs yeah. that are going to continue to go up on Mexico unless they stop uh, the flow of some of the uh, refugees from or immigrants from Central uh, America, and uh, which is a complete, <laughs> complete violation of the NAFTA agreement that was done. So yeah. uh, head pounding, I'm sure, in in Mexico City, yeah. in the vice president's office here in, in Canada. So uh, on the NAFTA thing, uh, um, I think this was more of an effort to to come up and say, you know, we're all together. This is an important thing, mm. um, and I think for the for the vice president, I think he was trying to send a message back to the Democrats back home, like, well, yeah. Canada's on board with this, so let's pass this. Let's get this The going. far more interesting thing to me was that this marked the first highest level request from the United States government, from the vice president to the prime minister, we want you to ban Huawei from 5G technology. That is, you deny BCE and TELUS, which largely are have Huawei equipment, you do not let them get into the 5G game. Yeah. He didn't say we're going to withhold uh, sensitive security intelligence information, but that's sure what he's saying between the lines. Yeah, he made it clear uh, on the podium, he said, that it is not in the United States feels it's not in our security interest to allow and, and 5G. And our allies' interest yeah. in this. Yeah. He says it's completely incompatible because China has lo two laws right now that require uh, comp domestic companies to uh, conduct espionage if, re if requested by um, right. the Chinese security services. And of course, the Huawei uh, executives say, saying, no. oh no, we would never do that if they're not asked. Well, we know what happens to Chinese executives who say no to the government. Mm -hmm. They end up in a gulag. Um, Christy, on either front, either on the NAFTA front or the Huawei front, what do you make of it, the, the visit of uh, Mike Pence and the developments this week? Well, I think that uh, Mike Pence made it clear that uh, the detention of the two Canadians in China, which of course is connected to the issue of Huawei in, yeah. in a big way, that this is going to be uh, on the agenda as President Trump looks ahead and, and Prime Minister Justin Trudeau, for that matter, at the G20, because there is yeah. an expected meeting between uh, President Xi from China and uh, U.S. President Donald Trump and that the detention of the two Canadians, uh, of course, uh, he, Mike Pence mentioned, of course, that the U.S. is standing shoulder to shoulder with Canada in calling out those what he calls arbitrary detentions of the two Canadians. But uh, there are major trade negotiations yeah. that are going on between the U.S. and China and the detention of the Canadians, Mike Pence says, will be part of those discussions. I guess the question for all of us, though, as Canadians, is how much can that help? I mean, right yes. now we have the senior Chinese officials are not even agreeing to talk to our foreign affairs minister, uh, Christian Freeland, she says she's not getting any any movement on that. So the question is, uh, Bob, do you think is, is much of a help? We did hear Mike Pompeo a few months ago say that, you know, give that pledge support for Canada and denounce Well, the, the Americans have, have been reiterating, and I think a, a good number of our allies have been too. But yeah. look, China is the way they play. And, and that's why we have to be careful about uh, Huawei, because think about this, if we let Huawei into our 5G technology and then they decide that Canada has done something wrong and they shut down our internet system or steal stuff from our internet system because they're, they're doing it to us now, why wouldn't they do it if we let them into, our, into a 5G technology mm -hmm. system? 
So are you uh, consulting with the prime minister on when he makes a decision? <laughs> he's saying he's he's uh, let's parse that though because he has been now for about six months saying the same thing. Well, that is, it's going to be the experts kick, who will decide. They're kicking the they're kicking the the wall down the road because, yeah. um, you know, they don't want to anger China any more any more than they have. Mm -hmm. And we have two Canadians who have been kidnapped. A couple of people, they've now decided to throw the death sentence at them. They've hit our canola farmers and our beef farmers, our pork farmers, rather. So I'm assuming if we were to make a decision to ban Huawei like Australia and New Zealand and the U.S. have, or blacklisted them, uh, they'd probably hit back at us again. So How long can we go without making a decision? I guess that's the other, the other question. Well, uh, two, of, two, secure, two of our uh, two, uh, CSIS directors who... Uh, want us to ban 5G technology uh, have have said that you know we should wait we shouldn't rush into this now yeah. so I wouldn't think till uh, after the election campaign mm -hmm. okay and also I mean there's there's been studies the European Union and UK are are, are trying to parse the results of the decision that they're making as well, well listen uh, on that note I'm going to let you go and write on this issue Christy on the uh, murdered <laughs> missing indigenous women and, and girls I know you're going to have a busy few hours writing uh, Set up pieces for this. I don't want to. But she both. has a little daughter who's going to help her with the work. <laughs> She'll help you. Help you file tonight. Thanks both of you. Thanks for coming in. Here, mommy, can I scribble on what you're writing? <laughs> That's how you Thank do you. it. Thanks for coming in. Thanks Thank both you. of you. Thank you.